Welcome back to another episode. Today we make this awesome ocean epoxy table. I believe I'm going to be selling these and I'm not quite sure why I'm talking like this. Stay tuned and I'll show you how to make this awesome epoxy table, 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 table. Hey guys, welcome back. So uh, in this episode, I'm going to take this slab here of, um, I was told it was magnolia. <clears throat> As you can see, it kind of looks like uh, rainbow poplar. Um, I'm going to take this piece and do a uh, deep pour epoxy river table. And uh, it's probably going to be about coffee size table. This is about, uh, about a four foot tall piece. Um, gonna have to take off the bark and uh, I just realized that it is quite warped so if you look down it you can see you get a high side over here um, or it could be the opposite it could be a high side down there so I'm gonna have to work that out but uh, stay tuned and uh, maybe we'll see how this thing turns out Okay, so uh, now you can see that this piece is cut off of here. Um, this one here doesn't want to move that much, so that tells me that's mostly flat. And this was the piece that if you put this back on here like that, you've got like a uh, one inch gap under this corner. So now we have basically a flatter surface to work with. I think I'm going to make this edge jagged, make all these edges interesting, uh, maybe kind of like a coastline because the uh, turquoise is reminiscent of the kind of looks like ocean. So uh, at this point I am uh, just planing this slab. Uh, I made a router jig um, so I could take off and uh, flatten this piece of uh, magnolia. Now I'm using this attachment on the angle grinder. Um, kind of looks like a metal disc with uh, rasp like teeth on it. And uh, it's pretty aggressive at removing wood. So I'm using that to do the majority of the carving. And uh, <clears throat> I had one with a chainsaw attachment uh, for a like a four or five inch blade but I could not find it. Um, I've since ordered a new one, but uh, that was after I completed this project. But this one did pretty good. Um, this is a kind of popular one on the market. So to pour this thing, uh, I'm using three quarter melamine and I'm also covering it um, entirely with uh, shipping tape. And as long as you do that, you won't have any problems with the epoxy sticking. And uh, also you're going to want to make sure you silicone all the edges like I do here and uh, double or triple check that you don't have any holes because uh, this stuff is like water and it will leak right out. So I mixed up a small batch of uh, like a um, ocean kind of turquoise blue, deep sea blue, uh, basically just a nice color blue that I like, um, kind of like a deep blue with a little bit of green to it. And uh, what I'm doing here is I am pouring a base layer and then I want to do the rest of the pour clear. And uh, I learned through doing some uh, epoxy coasters that you can get some uh, really cool effects if you do it like that, where you use a mostly clear and um, a color layer. So at this point I do have a coat on all the wood here and I'm just trying to measure um, length times width times height. Uh, so if you do it all in inches and divide by 61 that will give you the amount you need in liters. And then you can look at the bottles and determine how many liters are in a gallon and uh, kind of do the math from there. So 
so if I'm not mistaken I used just over three gallons and uh, I poured this in my garage during the summertime and I thought it would be okay because it wasn't even uh, two inches thick and um, it started to boil that's what those are there they look like air pockets but it's from the epoxy actually boiling so um, almost a complete failure with the pour and I guess depending on your standards for the table um, it could be a complete failure but I decided to uh, sand it and try to go ahead and save it um, So what I did is I ended up drilling a couple holes and boring out some holes trying to get rid of those bubbles to where I could fill it with epoxy and hopefully get um, almost a complete transparency so maybe that they would disappear once the epoxy was in there. And for the most part that did work. Um, it's not perfect but uh, I think I did save it and um, You'll see at the end. Um, it turns out nice. It's not perfect, but uh, in my mind, it is still a work of art, and it would be a shame to um, not finish the table. So, I guess uh, I did get some uh, micro bubbles in one of the last flood coats, and I still can't figure out why. I warmed it up. Um, I torched it. I'm not sure what I did wrong with one of those flood coats, but um, I definitely got some bubbles. That's that haziness that you kind of see there. Um, other than that, the, the table's just kind of dirty and it still needs to be cleaned up. But. So as you guys can see, this stuff is uh, very messy. Um, I was covered in white and my whole shop was covered in white. Um, definitely super duper messy. So <clears throat> after watching a lot of videos, um, it seemed that everybody liked to use this Osmo PolyX oil. And uh, usually when they're doing their tables, they have you know mostly wood and some epoxy and I don't know if that's why it didn't work here the first time I put it on I, I put a little bit of excess on figured I could sand it away and it would get uh, any penetration if it needed to that didn't seem to work um, I tried with the little pads that they recommend here and I tried to put on just a minimal and buff it out and that didn't seem to leave a very good finish either, so I'm not sure what I was doing wrong, but I was doing something wrong. So I may have to try this technique again in the future and see if there's anything I can do to uh, fix that, because I'd really like to use it, but it just didn't seem to work for me. Okay, so uh, I tried the, um, tried the Osmo oil, uh, this stuff here. And I was having a hard time getting it to lay down. No matter what I did, it would dry, it would get sticky. And I could see all the, uh, whatever direction I was applying it, I could see it. Um, and then it was getting sticky. And I've never used this stuff before. And I, I got the white pads, but it just wasn't seeming to work out. So I figured I would do it the, um, and maybe it's because this is all covered in epoxy. So it's almost like a, you know, it's basically solid epoxy. There's no wood that's actually getting, getting the oil in this application. So what I've done 
is uh, kind of the similar technique I use with the cutting boards. And I work my way through the grits from uh, 80, uh, 80, 100, 120, 220, 320, 400, 600, 800, 1000, all the way up to 3000 grit. And uh, now I'm gonna use the, uh, this is a coarse cutting pad. And uh, this is a ultra cut compound. Um, you can get this at um, any uh, automotive store and you can get this stuff at uh, Harbor Freight if you're looking to save some money or you can order it online. Um, but this is what I got and this is what I'm using. So. All right, so uh, first coat's going on. We're using the coarse pad and the coarse cutting compound. And uh, as you can see already, um, I had already brought the table up to about 3,000 grit with sandpaper. <clears throat> but you can see already with the first pass of the compound and the buffing pad, it's already starting to shine really nice. So I believe I did about two or three separate passes. Here I'm still using the coarse compound, but I'm using a uh, kind of like a medium to almost fine pad. And uh, you can tell by the different colors. I do uh, two passes with each. Um, kind of cross hatching going both ways making sure I hit all the edges especially the edges um, after I carve those up and you buff them um, <clears throat> I really like what it does to the table kind of adds that three-dimensional um, visual interest to the edges um, and it probably doesn't hurt the fact that it is kind of ocean themed uh, reminiscent so I don't know if the waves kind of play into that the waviness of the corners but uh, either way that's that's what I like and uh, what you watched there was final with the um, fine cutting compound and uh, and the fine pad also I ordered some uh, nice black uh, legs uh, metal legs for the table and uh, here I am just kind of squaring things up and trying to pre-drill them um, I got the countersink um, kind of furniture uh, screw uh, receivers or nuts. I'm not sure how you describe them. But that way you get a nice uh, connection from the table to the legs. And uh, as you can see here, uh, besides the minor bubbles and the minor large bubbles, which are few and far in between um, the table came out really really nice and being that this is a prototype um, I can live with that I don't know if I'll sell the table I could possibly even do a giveaway um, or I might just give it to someone special um, either way uh, <clears throat> you know now I have the process kind of set out and uh, I've made the failures so I know how to avoid those now I'd be interested in other ways to finish the table with maybe some kind of uh, scratch resistant finish uh, like I said I would have liked to use the poly X oil but that didn't work out I don't think but um, <clears throat> hey if you guys liked the video make sure you uh, uh, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to stay up to date and see more videos and uh, leave any comments or questions down below thanks for watching and if you're interested in purchasing one of these wonderful tables you can always message me on Instagram as well as look at the gallery of tables that I've made thanks for watching